A lot of techs condemn the TXV on an AC too quickly. It's sort of a running joke amongst us. It must be the TXV. The 13 SEER regulations in 2007 switched our metering devices from fixed orifice to a thermal expansion valve, TXV. They're more precise in regulating the flow of refrigerant into the evaporator coil, which makes the newer systems more efficient. Still, they sure are a hassle and inconsistent reliability at best. I normally don't ask for this, but please stay with me until the end of this video. If you don't, then you're going to be just like every other tech who determines right away it must be the TXV. When I go out to a call and the homeowner says, my system will start to cool fine, then as time goes along, the air isn't as cool and sometimes stops flowing altogether. You instinctively go out to the AC and put your gauges on to see what's going on with the pressures inside the system. You notice the high side is relatively normal to even a little high, but the low side is lower than normal. With the information that you've gathered up to this point, classic TXV starving the EVAP coil, right? What's happening inside the EVAP coil? Imagine looking at the inside of an evaporator coil while the blower air is going through it. With the right amount of refrigerant flowing through the TXV, you'll see enough liquid refrigerant in the coil, but not so much that it ends up leaving the coil in the suction line back to the compressor. It's a delicate balance. Remember, while the refrigerant goes through the TXV in liquid form, about halfway through it changes into a gas. And where that change happens means no more liquid refrigerant exists. It's gas now. And that point in the evaporator coil is the superheat measurement. So I'm trying to get you to envision the point where this change from liquid to gas happens inside the evap coil. Does it happen too early, starving it because a TXV is sticky or something? Or is it letting the evap coil have too much liquid, flooding it, making it so that the change in state happens too late in the coil? Sometimes the TXV randomly starves it and floods it several times an hour, and that's called hunting. Honestly, I see the TXV sticking in the nearly closed position more often than not. So for this video, I'm gonna lean that way in my description of our service call. Back to the gauges and the high side being normal to high and the suction side looking a little no lower than normal. I usually confirm this by adding a half a pound of refrigerant to see if the pressures go up. If you see that the high side rises, but the low side doesn't respond, you're heading in the right direction as far as locating the problem. When the customer said that the air cools fine at first, then it isn't cool and even stops flowing altogether, I just see all the little fins on the evaporator coil frosting up ever so slowly until it turns into a big ball of ice. Then air can't get through at all. Check these basics first. Before you condemn that TXV, make sure that you've checked the fundamentals first. Everything relies on a balance of refrigerant and airflow across these coils. And it starts with the right size equipment. Assuming you have matching sized evaporator coil and condenser coils, make sure that you have three to 400 CFMs of air going across the evaporator coil. Are the air filters clean? And are there more than one? Are the condenser coils clean? Is the evaporator coil clean? Is the blower assembly clean? If it's a condensing furnace, is the secondary heat exchanger clean? It might sound weird, but has the condenser fan blade been changed since the original install? Is it still the right size, removing heat efficiently? Check the airflow chart inside the book. It'll give you details about where the dip switches or speed taps need to be to achieve proper CFMs of airflow for that particular setup. Check the ducts and make sure that they aren't crushed especially the return duct. Is there a kink somewhere in the line set that runs between the outdoor unit and the indoor unit? Another restriction could be at the filter dryer. Is there more than a two to three degree difference between one side of the liquid line filter dryer and the other? You've made sure it's a TXV and not a fixed orifice, right? Is it the right size and is it designed for the same refrigerant in your system? Let it run for a few minutes. Your gauges could be doing a myriad of things right now, depending on whether the TXV is stuck open, hunting, or partially stuck closed. So let's get into faulty TXVs. You can tell what your TXV is doing by checking your superheat and subcooling. 
it lets you envision the state of the refrigerant and where that crucial point in the, is in the system where the liquid turns to gas. Superheat is the difference between the suction pressure converted to temperature and the actual suction line temperature. What do I mean by the temperature of the EVAP coil? Because what you're seeing when you look at the low side pressures is the outside ring number, right? 125 PSI on the suction side. Well, looking at that inner pink R410 ring on these yellow jacket gauges translates that pressure over to about 43 degrees. That means the temperature of the EVAP coil is 43 degrees. The closer to 32 degrees that EVAP coil temperature gets, the closer it is to frosting up and eventually turning into an ice block. Subcooling is the difference between the high side pressure converted to temperature and the actual liquid line temperature. That high side pressure translated to temperature equals the temperature of the outdoor condenser. So on a 95 degree day, it's not uncommon to see these high pressures around 365 PSI or 110 degrees. So the temperature of that condensing coil at that moment is 110 degrees. Communicating pressures to each other. I've said it before, but I like it when my guys talk to me in temperatures instead of pressures. All of the refrigerants out there being used right now have different pressures from each other. If you just tell me what the temperature of the EVAP coil is and the temperature of the condenser coil, it saves me from having to do the math in my head. And some guys are completely the opposite. They only speak in pressures, but essentially they're doing the same thing. So what can we tell using superheat and subcool? Figure out what your superheat and subcooling are supposed to be that day. And that's another video. A high subcool and high superheat tells you that the TXV is restricted and starving the evaporator coil. Low subcool and low superheat tells you that the TXV is overfeeding or flooding the evap coil. Low subcool and high superheat tells you that the system is just low on charge, while high subcool and low superheat tells you that the system is overcharged. You've determined it is indeed a bad TXV. What can you do now? You could try lightly tapping on it with a tool. Of course, do it in a way that you don't damage the capillary tubes. You can also take the sensing bulb off of its mounted position and hold it in the palm of your hand. That'll warm it up and cause the valve to try to open and allow more refrigerant through it. Conversely, if you had a glass of ice water and stuck the sensing bulb in there, the valve would try to close and restrict refrigerant. Doing either of these might free the valve temporarily, but you should let the homeowner know that it's on borrowed time. There are so many things that can make it seem like the TXV is bad. An inefficient compressor, moisture in the lines, dirt and debris in the lines, the sensing bulb not being in the right position, an undercharged system that'll eventually freeze the coil, a restriction in the liquid line can cause flash gas, reducing the valve's capacity, and all of those basic checks that I listed before. Hopefully this helps you figure out your next TXV failure a little bit easier. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating and Air. Don't forget to subscribe and check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.